Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschatya Desatarine Vanchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we are continuing our study of the Bhagavad Gita this evening. We are going on to chapter number 17, the divisions of faith. Okay. Um, my screen. So at the end, at the end of chapter 16, Lord Krishna was describing the importance of following the scriptures. And he described that if you don't follow the scriptures, then you never achieve the supreme destination and you'll never be happy and you'll never get success. So Arjuna had a question, has a question in the beginning of the 17th chapter. He wants to know, well, what if we follow something with faith? But it's not scriptures. What about that? Just like sometimes we have traditions which are just customs, some in the family or in the in the community. And we follow these things. It's in, it's not in the scriptures, but it's a tradition. So we follow it. So Arjuna wants to know, is that in goodness or passion or ignorance? Go ahead. Yeah, first, okay, here's the first verse. Arjuna inquired, O Krishna, what is the situation of those who do not follow the principles of Scripture, but worship according to their own imagination? Are they in goodness, in passion, or in ignorance? Right? They don't they don't follow any scripture, but they worship. So this worship which they're doing is just according to their own tradition or imagination. So 
Arjuna wants to know what are they, are they in goodness or passion or ignorance? Go ahead, next slide. Okay, number two. Lord Krishna replies, According to the modes of nature acquired by the embodied soul, one's faith can be of three kinds, goodness, passion or ignorance. Now hear about this. So Arjuna wanted to know if somebody has faith, are they in goodness, passion or ignorance? Krishna said they could be in either. They could be in goodness, they could be in passion, they could be in ignorance. There's different kinds of faith. So we're going to see what is the difference between these different kinds of faith. Go ahead, next slide. Yes, 7-4. Men in goodness, people who have faith in goodness, they worship the demigods. Those in the mode of passion worship the demons, and those in the mode of ignorance worship ghosts and spirits. <laughs> So people who worship the demigods like Brahma and Shiva or Ganesh, then they're in the mode of goodness. And people who worship demons, they're in the mode of passion. Srila Prabhupada told us there was one man, he made a lot of money when there was a war, when there was a big war between England and Germany, and this one man, he made a lot of money doing business. So he was worshipping the leaders of the country. So, and some people, some people who are not very well educated, they will worship ghosts and spirits. They go, sometimes there's a ghost lives in a tree and they will worship that. And sometimes in the graveyards there will be some evil, some ghosts or spirits and people will put offerings there for them. So that's the mode of ignorance. Okay, go ahead. Next slide. Yeah, here we see. So faith is in different modes of nature. Food is also in different modes of nature. So Lord Krishna describes the qualities of food in the different modes. So food in the mode of goodness it's described first that it will be juicy and wholesome, pleasing to the heart and fatty. Uh, 
and the effect of eating food in the mode of goodness, it increases the duration of life. And it purifies, it gives strength, it gives good health and satisfaction. So this is food like fruits and vegetables and uh, grains, these kind of things. And food in the mode of passion will be very bitter or very strong taste, very smelly. Some, sometimes we very salty and very be very hot. So food in the mode of passion will easily give disease. And you get disease and also it causes distress and misery. Then food in the mode of ignorance was described that has no taste and it decomposed. And it can, it can also be food which is uh, the, the remnants, it's been left around for a long time, it's gone bad. And then untouchable things means things like animal flesh. So when you eat food like that, then it makes you very lazy, makes you sleep and takes away the quality of mercy. So you can see, you should want to eat food which is in the mode of goodness. And we should avoid the passionate and the ignorant. Go ahead. Oh, now Krishna talks about sacrifice, because sacrifice can also be good or passion or ignorance. So, food, uh, sacrifice in the mode of goodness will be done according to the scriptures and as a matter of duty and without desire for some reward. And the sacrifice in the mode of passion is that's for you, you, people who do it for some material benefit or for the sake of their own pride to get a big a good name and then sacrifice in the mode of ignorance is it's not done, you don't follow any, they don't follow any scripture and they don't distribute prasada, they don't chant the Vedic hymns and they don't have faith <coughs> and they, they don't pay it, they don't give any charity to the priest. 
ปฏิบัติบูชาที่ทําไปในระดับอวิชาเนี่ยคือเขาเนี่ยจะจะไม่ปฏิบัติตามคําแนะนําของพระเวสนะแล้วก็จะไม่มีการแจกจ่ายประสาดำไม่มีการสวดบทมนต์พระเวสแล้วก็จะทําไปโดยปราศจากความศรัทธาแล้วก็ไม่มีการให้ทาน So you can see the difference between the different modes. It may be the same activity, but different, done in different ways. Okay, go ahead. Now, Krishna stopped describing. About the austerity of the body. What does it mean to do for the body to be austere? Sometimes people think austerity of the body is to stick nails into the body or to torture the body. But no, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes. We'll read. Austerity of the body consists in worship of the supreme Lord, the Brahmanas, the spiritual master, and superiors like father and mother, and in cleanliness, simplicity, celibacy, and non-violence. ความสมถะของร่างกายประกอบด้วยการบูชาองค์พระขวานบูชาพรามบูชาพระอาจารย์ทิพย์และบูชาบุพการีเช่นปิดามารดามีความสะอาดเรียบง่ายถือพระมจันทร์และไม่เบียดเบียน So you can see in the in the pictures the devotees worshiping the deities that's austerity of the body and then the other picture the Boy and the girl, they're touching the feet of their parents. They're honoring their parents. That's also austerity of the body. We can see in the room, the room first, that is the worship of the Pratima. The room second is the worship of the Pukkari. The head is the head of the mother. And then you can see in the bottom picture, he's worshiping the spiritual master. The devotee is offering Guru Puja to Prabhupada. Go ahead. Okay, so we heard about austerity of the body. Now it's austerity of the speech. So you can see, we put on the right side. You can see speech filters. We want to check: Are we practicing the austerity in speaking? So we can check. We can ask ourselves first of all: Is it true? เราสามารถถามตัวเราเองก่อนได้นะคะว่าสิ่งที่เราพูดอยู่นี้นะมันเป็นความจริงไหม Right, if it's not true, then we don't need to speak. We don't need to say. We shouldn't tell lies. ถ้าเกิดว่ามันไม่ใช่ความจริงเนี่ยเราก็ไม่จำเป็นที่จะลองพูดเพราะว่าเราไม่ควรที่จะพูดโกหก And then second thing is what we're saying. Is it pleasing? We want to speak words which are pleasing, not just insulting. แล้วก็ส่วนที่สิ่งที่สองนะที่เราควรคำนึงถึงก็คือมันเป็นสิ่งที่ฟังแล้วทําให้คนเนี่ยพึงพอใจไหมน่าฟังไหม Sometimes people are very expert. They will speak very harshly. They will speak very nasty to other people. They're not pleased. They don't speak pleasing words. แล้วผู้คนนะบางครั้งเนี่ยเขาจะพยายามพูดกระแทกกระแทงคนอื่นแบบให้คนอื่นเขาเจ็บอะไรอย่างเงี้ยมันฝักคนอื่นเขาฟังแล้วมันไม่รู้สึกว่ามันลื่น So this is austerity, controlling our speech. We want to say things which are true and pleasing. 
พราะฉะนั้นนี้ก็ถือว่าเป็นความสมถะประเภทหนึ่งนะคะถ้าเกิดว่าเราพูดจะพูดแต่สิ่งที่เป็นความจริงแล้วก็พูดแล้วเป็นสิ่งที่ลื่นหูคนหนึ่ง Then the next thing is it beneficial แล้วสิ่งนี้สามที่เราควรคำนึงก็คือมันเป็นประโยชน์แก่ผู้ฟังไหม When we what we say we want it should be beneficial to people it shouldn't be harmful to people it should be good for them to hear. เราจะต้องรู้ว่าสิ่งที่เราจะพูดอยู่นี้เนี่ยมันจะต้องเป็นสิ่งที่ดีสําหรับผู้ฟังสิ่งนี้เป็นประโยชน์สําหรับผู้ผู้ฟังมันไม่ควรที่จะเป็นสิ่งที่ทําให้เขากระทบกระเทือนจิตใจเขา And then the fourth thing it should not be agitating. แล้วก็มันไม่ควรที่จะเป็นสิ่งที่ทำให้ทำให้คนอื่นเนี่ยรู้สึกเหมือนกับว่ายั่วอารมณ์นะคะแบบว่าทำให้รู้สึกโกรธอะไร Sometimes people we we just like to say things we just want to agitate the mind of people it's not very good บางครั้งเนี่ยผู้คนเนี่ยเราก็จะอยากแค่อยากจะพูดจาแบบประชดประชันเพื่อให้ So these are four things which will help us to check the austerity in our speaking. And then the the final thing, Krishna, as he said, is also an austerity of speech to regularly recite Vedic literature. แต่ตรงนี้ชนะก็จะบอกว่าความสมถะในการพูดคือการคือการพูดแบบแบบวัดท่องวรรณกรรมพระเวทสม่ำเสมอ Just like we're reading Bhagavad Gita, if we should do it regularly. We should every day we should read one chapter. เหมือนกันกับพระวัตกิตานะเป็นหนังสือที่เราเนี่ยควรที่จะอ่านเป็นประจำสม่ำเสมออย่างน้อยวันละหนึ่งบท If we go through the Bhagavad Gita chap one chapter a day every day. And when when we finish it, then we go through it again, and then we we do that like five, six, eight times. We start to know the Bhagavad Gita. We are not going to do it like this. We are going to do it every day, every day, every day. And if we finish it, we go back and read it five, six, seven times. That will help us to understand the Bhagavad Gita. Then we will start to understand the Bhagavad Gita. This Bhagavad Gita is spoken by Lord Krishna. Just to guide us through all the trouble of the Kali Yuga. พระกฎิตาเนี่ยพระพระกิสนาทรงตรัสเพื่อที่จะเป็นแนวทางนะแนะนำทางเราให้ใช้ชีวิตในกาลียูกานี้ So it's a very good habit to do something like that. Read the Bhagavad Gita every day. เป็นนิสัยที่ดีนะถ้าเกิดว่าเราสามารถทำตรงนี้การอ่านพระวัตกิตาให้เป็นนิสัยได้เนี่ยมันเป็นสิ่งที่ดี So we will just read the verse Austerity of speech consists in speaking words that are truthful, pleasing, beneficial and not agitating to others and also in regularly reciting Vedic literature ความสมถะในการพูดประกอบด้วยคำพูดที่เป็นสัจจะรื่นหูเป็นประโยชน์ไม่ทำให้ผู้อื่นเร่าร้อนและท่องวรรณกรรมพระเวทสม่ำเสมอ Go ahead next slide austerity of the mind right so we had austerity of the body which is the Yeah. Okay. Right. Open it. Yes. Can you see now? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So austerity of the mind. We had austerity of the body. That's the easiest. Then austerity of speaking. That's the next one. Austerity of the mind is the most difficult. เพราะฉะนั้นเราก็ได้เรียนเกี่ยวกับความสมถะของร่างกายไปแล้วอันนี้เป็นสิ่งง่ายสุดต่อมาก็คือความสมถะ
แต่ในการพูดใช่ไหมแล้วก็ส่วนต่อมาก็คือความสมถะในการของจิตใจ No, the solar Krishna is describing what qualities we should cultivate to practice austerity of the mind. And satisfaction, simplicity, gravity, self-control, and purification of one's existence are the austerities of the mind. มีความพึงพอใจเรียบง่ายจริงจังควบคุมตนเองได้และมีความบริสุทธิ์ในชีวิตความเป็นอยู่เป็นความสมถะของจิตใจ So satisfaction is is it's important for us especially to cultivate the mode of goodness you want to be in the mode of goodness we have to learn to be satisfied with whatever we have whatever situation we find ourselves in just accept it As the arrangement of Krishna. Just like somebody may be very, very, very rich, or somebody may be very poor, we accept it. We just have to be satisfied. We accept whatever situation we're in. It's Krishna's mercy, Krishna's arrangement. Due to our past karma, we're placed in this situation. And we should be simple. We shouldn't be complicated. We shouldn't lie and cheat. We should be simple and straightforward. And gravity means we should be serious. We shouldn't joke and fool around. And self-control means we have to practice controlling our mind and senses. And then purification of our existence. So we have to be careful what thing, what we allow to occupy our mind. We want to keep our mind pure. We want to think about Krishna. We want to think about the holy name. So these are different. Things which we have to practice to practice austerity of the mind. Go ahead. So now we see austerity can be in goodness or passion or ignorance. Somebody is going to do austerity, but are they doing it in goodness, or are they doing it in passion, or in ignorance? If we look at the bottom, austerity and ignorance to torture the body. And to destroy uh, and injure others, this is austerity and ignorance. The 
And so people perform this kind of austerity out of ignorance. They're foolish. They're foolish to do this. They would, they, just like Haranyakashipu, he tortured the body. Haranyakashipu was a big demon. He stood on his tiptoes for many years and he let all the insects eat all the flesh off his body. And then austerity in the mode of passion is to get respect and honor and worship from others. And people do this kind of austerity out of their own pride because they're very proud. Then austerity and goodness is for the sake of pleasing the Supreme, for the pleasure of Krishna. We should, we can do austerity. And people will do that austerity without thinking of any benefit for themselves. And they have faith in the Supreme Lord. Austerity in goodness is doing, you can do things like uh, chanting the holy name. Waking up early in the morning to worship the deity, it's austerity and goodness. Go to Mongol Arti. Go ahead. Okay, charity. Giving charity can also be influenced. Some, not all charity is good. Sometimes it's wrong to give charity. So we have to be careful who we give charity to. So charity in, ig in ignorance is done at the, uh, at the, the wrong, impure place. The, if, you, if you give charity an impure place, it means you give charity and maybe in, in a, well, a place where people are all intoxicated and drunk. You don't want to give charity. And if you give charity at an improper time, an improper time would be oh, uh, improper time. Well, some, there's auspicious times and there's inauspicious times. Auspicious time is like uh, when you visit a holy place, you go to a holy place, that's a good time to give charity. เวลาที่ไม่เหมาะสมมันก็จะมีวันที่เอ่อวันที่เป็นวันไม่ดีอะไรหรือว่าเวลาวันที่เวลาที่เหมาะสมก็คือเวลาเราเอ่อเดินท
But if people are drug addicts or alcoholics and they come to you for charity and they want to buy more drugs or alcohol, then you don't want to give these kind of people charity. So sometimes people give charity, they don't give it in the proper attitude, they don't give it with, with, with proper respect. It's not... Maybe they give it grudgingly. Oh no, that's the mode of passion. If you give the charity grudgingly, that's the mode of passion. That's the next one. It means you didn't really want to give, but somehow you're forced to give. So you give it, you know, you don't give it in the right mood. You give it with a grudge. That's the mode of passion. And more in the mode of passion, we give charity because we want to we want to get some benefit for it. We will think, I, I will give this much, I will get ten times what I give back. We are thinking how much we will profit. And then in the mode of goodness, we will give charity out of the sense of duty. And without any expectation to get anything back. Next slide. Okay, so this is explaining about these words, Om Tat Sat. Om Tat Sat are the words taken from Vedic hymns indicating the absolute truth, Lord Krishna. So we can see, we put some examples there, different uses of the word Om Tat Sat, just like it says it. Om iti tat brahmano nidistam nama tattvam asi sat eva somya. So these are the this Vedic mantras, right? Om. Om means the name of Lord Vishnu actually, represents Lord Vishnu, represents a complete whole. <laughs> อย่างที่ท่านท่องให้ฟังเมื่อกี้นี้นะคะ 3 we do sacrifice or charity or penance we should also say the word tat and Sat means the eternal. Go ahead. Okay, the penance, sacrifice, charity, and foods when aimed at the Supreme. Om Tat Sat the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they become means for spiritual elevation. Mm -hmm. 
องพระวานทรงพึงพอพระทัยนะคะองค์ทัสตันเนี่ยทรงเรียกับสุริยมาจารย์ก็จะทําให้สิ่งนั้นเนี่ยเป็นทิพย์ so if we do these things if we do some penance or sacrifice do a sacrifice just sacrifice we do like chanting Hare Krishna it's a sacrifice and charity we give some charity maybe we give some donation and foods we eat foods if we do these things if it's all for the pleasure of Krishna Om Tat Sat then we make spiritual advancement การกราบเวลาเราสวดมนต์หรือว่าเราให้ทานหรือว่าเรารับประทานอาหารอะไรอย่างเงี้ยเพื่อถ้าสิ่งเหล่านี้เนี่ยทำไปเพื่อความพึ
our remembrance of Krishna. If we fast and we're just feeling tired and weak all day, we can't do anything, that's not very good. A real purpose of fasting is to increase that we should we should remember Krishna better that day. And that means we have to do more chanting and more hearing of Krishna. So devotees on these holy days, they'll do more chanting and they'll have more kirtan and they'll have more classes. So you have to understand the real purpose of this austerity. We don't want to torture ourselves. We want to remember Krishna. Go ahead. So, here's a, we we're talking about sacrifice. So in the Kali Yuga, the real sacrifice is Sankirtan. In different ages, and there are four ages, there are four ages, and each age there's a different process for self-realization. So in the Satya Yuga, the Satya Yuga was the first age where people lived a very long time. So people would do meditation on Lord Vishnu. And then in the next age, the Treta Yuga, people would perform sacrifices. Then in Dwapara Yuga, they would serve Krishna, and serve the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, especially the deity. And in the Kali Yuga, they, set, they get the same benefit of all of these other ages simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Actually, in all the other ages, there was also the chanting of the holy name. But in the other ages, people, they, they like to do these other things. They like to do meditation and they like to do deity worship and they like to perform sacrifice. They thought chanting the holy name, that's too easy. They wanted to do something more difficult. But in the Kali Yuga, there's only the chanting of the Holy Name. There's no other way. Okay, go ahead. So charity, charity, to do charity for the pleasure of the Supreme. What can we do 
One way you can do charity for the Supreme is to distribute books. Another way is to help build temples of Krishna. And another way is to distribute prasadam. Yeah, if you like to cook, then you can cook prasadam yourself and then go and distribute it. And if you don't like to to cook yourself, you can pay some money to someone, pay someone, and they'll cook the prasadam and they give it to you and you can distribute it. Sometimes when somebody dies in the family, then we will do like that. We'll, we'll sponsor the prasadam distribution in the temple and we'll feed all the people and we'll have a big, we'll make a special prasadam and we can go and distribute it to all the devotees. And when you give them prasadam, then all the devotees are very happy and they'll give blessings for the, the person who died in your family. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Mahaprasadam Jai. Okay, so we like Mahaprasadam. You can see nice offering, very nice offering. So many varieties, so many preparations. Makes you hungry, yeah? <laughs> yes. Okay, we've all enjoyed prasadam. Go ahead. Okay, well, one last story here before we finish. This is about Brigu, Brigu Muni. He was a great demigod and all the demigods, they wanted to know who is the supreme among Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. So they asked Brigu Muni to go and test them. First of all, Brigu Muni went to see Lord Brahma. Now Lord Brahma is like the father of Brigu Muni. But when Brigu Muni went to see... So Brahma controlled the anger, but Brigu Muni could see that Brahma was not happy with him because he didn't respect him. So then Brigu Muni went to Kailash to see Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva, he's like a brother of Brigu Muni. So Lord Shiva came to embrace Brigu Muni. But Brigu Muni said to Shiva, don't touch me, don't you come near me, you've got these snakes on your body, your body's all ashes, you're not pure, I don't want you touching me, don't touch me. So Lord Shiva got really angry at him. And Lord Shiva was going to kill him, he was coming up, but Parvati was there, his wife was there, so she she grabbed Lord Shiva, she was holding him and she told Brigamuni, go, go quickly, get away from here, he will kill you. 
หรือพาสิวาก็รู้สึกโกรธแล้วอยากจะสังหารเขาสังหารริกุมนีในทันดีทันทีนะแต่ทันใดนั้นเนี่ยภรรยาก็ได้ห้ามเอาไว้บอกว่าอย่าอย่าทําเช่นนั้นเลยแล้วก็บอกริกุมนีว่าให้รีบออกไปให้รีบหนีไป So then b r i g u m u n i went to see Lord Vishnu, and Lord Vishnu was laying on his cell, on his bed of Ananta Shesha, with Lakshmi beside him. And b r i g u m u n i came there, and he kicked Lord Vishnu on the chest. Now, uh, b r i g u m u n i เนี่ยก็เดินทางไปหาพระพระวิษณุนะคะพระวิษณุก็นอนอยู่แล้วก็นอนอยู่ที่นอนอยู่แล้วปรากฏว่าบริกุมนีเนี่ยก็ใช้เท้าเนี่ยเตะไปที่หน้าอกของพระนารายณ์ So when b r i g u m u n i kicked him on the chest, Lord Lord Vishnu said to b r i g u m u n i Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, b r i g u m u n i I hope you did not hurt your foot on my hard chest. แล้วพอบริกุมนีเตะไปที่หน้าอกของพระนารายณ์นะพระนารายณ์บอกโอ้ข้าขอโทษนะพอดีโอ้หน้าอกข้าเนี่ยมันแบบว่าแข็งนิดนึงไม่แน่ใจว่าท่านเจ็บขาหรือเปล่า So b r i g u m u n i was amazed that Lord Vishnu was so tolerant that after he had kicked him he said oh I hope you didn't hurt yourself แล้วบริกุมนีก็รู้สึกประทับใจกับความอดทนของพระนารายที่บอกว่าถึงแม้ข้าเนี่ยทำนิสัยไม่ดีไปเตะที่หน้าอกเนี่ยแต่ท่านก็ยังแบบว่าด้วยความอ่อนน้อมทำตนเนี่ยถามข้าแบบนี้ So Brigamuni could immediately understand Lord Vishnu is greater than Brahma and Shiva แล้วเรื่องราวนี้ก็ทำให้ Brigamuni เนี่ยเข้าใจว่าพระนารพระนารายณ์เนี่ยใหญ่กว่าพระศิวาและพระวิษณุ Okay go ahead Okay. Any questions? Ah, uh, we finished. Now, it's a bit long. If anyone has any questions, if anyone has any questions, you can ask them. Okay. Okay. So this is the divisions of faith, and. We just have one more chapter, but there's two sections, so we have two more classes to finish the whole Bhagavad Gita. So we learned about the nature of faith that people may worship without any scriptures. Is it in goodness or passion or ignorance? เราก็เรียนเรื่องเรียนเรื่องระดับความศรัทธานะคะว่าการการบูชาประเภทไหนที่อยู่ในระดับความดีต่างหากแล้วใช่ And we heard it could be. And either it could be in goodness, if it's done simply for the pleasure of the supreme, then of well, no, I we said worship of the demigods is in goodness. <laughs> And worship of the demons is in passion, and the worship of the ghosts and evil spirits is in ignorance. Of course, if people offer, if they offer meat and alcohol like that to the to the to the demigods, then that's the mode of ignorance. So in everything, there's some influence of the material nature. There'll be in, in everything we heard, we heard charity, food, sacrifice. Everything there's it can all be understood 
according to the different modes of nature. So Prabhu Konsawang has a question. Chai Shai is also here now with a question. Yes. yes. Okay. So what's her question? Chai Lea. ขอสาธุครับอ่าผมมีคําถามอยากจะอยากจะถามนิดนึงครับเพราะว่าเอ่อถ้าผมอยากจะมีชาพระปฏิมาของพระนาคอ่าต้องต้องให้ความเนี่
Srila Prabhupada said about Bangkok, because Prabhupada was going to come to Bangkok at one point, and he told the devotees in Bangkok, he said, don't worry about installing deities in Bangkok. He said, people in Thailand already have so many deities. He said, let them understand the philosophy first of all. So you just concentrate on chanting the holy name and get taste for chanting the holy name. Don't worry about bringing deities because you bring deities then it's very easy to get offences, to make offences and then it will stop your spiritual advancement. So we have two initiations. There's the first initiation, which is chanting of the holy name, where you get a spiritual name and you get the beats. And the second initiation is where you get the Brahman thread and you're given the Gayatri mantra to chant which is chanted by the Brahmins. การอุปสมบทของเราเนี่ยจะมีอยู่ด้วยการส่งรูปแบบนะคะการอุปสมบทแรกเนี่ยเป็นการอุปสมบทเอ่อเพื่อการสวดมนต์นะพระนามสักด
ไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะเลยอยากจะให้คุณมหารัฐแนะนํานิดนึงว่าควรจะทําข้อมูลแบบไหนหรือว่าแนะนําเอคนที่เริ่มที่จะปฏิบัติอะค่ะแล้วแล้วอย่างเงี้ยเขาเริ่มต้นด้วยการถือศีลเอกราชีเลยโดยที่ข้ามโฟร์ปิ้นซิเปิลไปเนี่ยจะเป็นอะไรไหมอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะโอเคขอบคุณมากค่ะฮาริกิชนะโอเค Uh, so recently, she wrote uh, on fasting e k a d a s i on her page, and then people get interested, and then they they like to start fasting on e k a d a s i But they been thinking that it's for you know to uh, clean their sin sinful activities. Like uh, on the Buddhism, they have. Some important days that they fast for the Lord to purify something like that. So the person want to follow the e g a d a s i day, but without doing full regulative principle. But they are interested in following the e g a d a s i So in this case, how should she advise them? I think you should advise them to chant the holy name. If they want to get bet, benefit from, get freed from, oh no, that's also not good, is it? I, I, they have to, they have to learn about their sinful, sinful activities, the four regulated principles. You should teach them the four principles. <laughs> กิจกรรมไหนเนี่ยเป็นกิจกรรมบาปอย่างเช่นสินสีคอที่มันที่เราถือว่ามันเป็นกิจกรรมบาปเนี่ยให้เขาได้รู้ If they do fasting on a k a d a s i and then go back again the next day and start to do all their sinful activities again then that's like the bathing of the elephant ถ้าเกิดเขาได้ถือสินอดในวันในกระดาษีแล้วก็อีกวันรุ่งขึ้นไปทำบาปเหมือนเดิมอันนั้นมันก็เป็นเหมือนกับการอาบน้ำของช้าง The the elephant gets very clean, but then comes out a bit, it rolls in the dirt or it throws dirt all over itself again right after it takes bath. And so people are doing the same thing; they're fasting on the k a r a s i and then next day they're doing all sinful activities. It doesn't do any good. <laughs> เหมือนกันก็อาบน้ำของช้างเนี่ยที่เวลาช้างไปอาบน้ำในแม่น้ำมาเสร็จพอขึ้นมาข้างบนเขาก็จะไปคุกขี่กับฝุ่นเหมือนเดิมเหมือนกันกับบุคคลที่ถือสินอดในวันในกระดาษีแต่ว่าพอวันอื่นก็กลับไปทำกิจกรรมบาปเหมือนเดิมมันก็ไม่ได้เป็นประโยชน์อะไรมากแค่นั้น So people have to learn they want to do proper atonement they have to stop their sinful activities เพราะฉะนั้นถ้าเกิดบุคคลเนี่ยอยากจะพัฒนาจริงๆเนี่ยเขาต้องเรียนรู้ความสมถะว่าเป็นปฏิบัติไปยังไง Tell the real atonement that when when they they when they take to Krishna consciousness and they have to follow four principles and chant the holy name และถ้าเกิดเขาเนี่ยอยากจะทำวิธีการชำระบาปที่แท้จริงเนี่ยก็ควรที่จะหยุดกิจกรรมบาปแล้วก็ควรที่จะสวดภาวนาพระนามศักดิ์สิทธิ์ตรงนี้น่าจะช่วยคุณนะ But if they just do devotional service to get rid of their sinful reactions, that's just the more the goodness. That's not pure devotion. แต่ถ้าเกิดเขาเนี่ยอยากจะปฏิบัติการรู้ตัวเสียสลับสายเพียงเพื่อให้ตนเองเป็นอิสระจากผลบาปเท่านั้นเนี่ยอันนั้นเนี่ยมันเป็นการการทำในระดับแห่งความดีมันยังไม่ถือว่าเป็นการปฏิบัติการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้ They should want to come to the level of pure devotion เขาควรบุคคลควรที่จะพยายามมาถึงระดับแห่งการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้ So these people want to do a k a d a s i fasting. You have to tell them what is the real purpose of a k a d a s i fasting. It's to increase our remembrance of Krishna. So, as I said, I'm talking about the point or the point of 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 the point of
we're meant to chant more, we're meant to hear more about Krishna on the holy day. Of course, these people who are Buddhists, they have a very material understanding. You see, they think that they think religion is like that. They think they practice Buddhism just to get free of suffering. They don't really understand the real goal, which is to become devotee and to surrender to Krishna. But they just want to get free from their suffering, free from their sins. So we invite everyone to come and chant Hare Krishna, chant the holy name, that's a dude Sankirtan, and that way you get the real benefit, you get more benefit and you get on the courtesy. You join the Sankirtan, you chant the holy name, it just destroys all sinful reactions. So the chanting of the holy name is the most auspicious. So you try to get these people to chant the holy name. Okay, so I think Rajasuya has a question. Hare Krishna, thank you for a wonderful class. Today we learn from this chapter 17 that there is three kind of giving charity, like meaning ignorance, passion, and goodness. And of course, uh, moods of goodness giving uh, is the best. And in this regard, sometimes we we go to collect money to the, for the temple to the different people and. When we ask money, sometimes they, they don't want to pay more, so they pay little, and then we have to say that if you give me more, Krishna will give you a hundred times more, a thousand times more like this. And then we are, we force them to, to you know, like, we force them to think that, oh, I'm going to get some more. So in this way, we, the, the charity that they give is not, in mood of goodness because maybe it's become mood of passion and also sometimes devotee came to us as well for some temple project and they also Archana? Yes, Maharaj. I think his connection, Proji. Proji, that I go connection, I go. There is an is any shop there? Incredible. Okay, anyways, making the point, people are giving charity, it's not really in the mood of goodness. But at least because they're giving something, then gradually they can be improved. You see, because they're giving for Krishna. And so their motive, of course, is that they'll get more, they'll get maybe more money back. I think I'm giving, we say, sometimes we say, egg paisa dega, dust like malaga, right? We'll give one. 
One paisa will get back ten mic. So people like the idea that they can get big, you know, more money. If they give to Krishna, they'll get more back. So it encourages people to give. So you, it's not pure, but it can become pure because they've started to give. So gradually they can become pure. ในภาษาอินเดียบอกว่าให้พระเจ้าหนึ่งรูปีเนี่ยจะได้กลับคืนมาเป็นนี้and we hope because they're giving charity that you know that you will invite them to the temple and they will come to see the program and you'll give them prasadam and you will honor them so that that will be good if they come to the program they take part in the program because they give donation they'll think i should go for the program so they'll come and attend the program and they'll get you'll give them prasadam you give some book maybe to them as well, because they give donation, you give them something. So that's nice, and they benefit. People, they give something for Krishna, we give something back, we give whatever we can, we give some present, we give some box of cookies or some piece of prasada or some books like that. And so it's beneficial, it's purifying for them They eat the prasada. <laughs> We always, when we go to see people to get donations, we always carry some prasadam, give them some prasadam. Because they're giving contribution, they're giving donation, we want to give them also spiritual benefit. We don't just only take donation, we want to give them something as well. So we give prasada, we give some book, and we'll give the holy name, chant the holy name to them, let them hear the holy name. <laughs> And we give them the invitation to come for the program. They're donating for the program. So we invite them, please come for the program, bring your family. And if they come for the program, they'll get more benefit. <laughs> And they will feel good that they did something good. I give money, I give a donation for this program that's very good. They feel good in their heart. I give money for that. They saw that money went for the temple, for the temple program. So they feel satisfied in their heart. People have, they'll spend so much money, they'll spend so much money on buying things when they go shopping, they buy so many things, they buy clothes, they buy shoes, the women buy so much makeup and then they go for they will go to cinemas and restaurants, they will spend so much money. So we take a little money for Krishna. 
it's good for the, all the other things they do, they get karma, bad karma, but they give to Krishna, they get a lot of benefit, they get a lot of mercy from Krishna. <laughs> So giving to Krishna that's the greatest benefit for them. But they spend the money and they spend the money on alcohol or restaurants or cinemas. They waste their money. They don't know how to get the real benefit from their money. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sarah Punamama, do you have a question? Maybe last one. Okay. Chaleha. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Arjuna will translate for me, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Arjuna, that ham, wa, bangti, na, bangti, la, makiri Guru Maharaj, wa, wa, wa. อ่าเป็นสมถะใช่มั้ยคะสมถะในการอ่าการพูดแล้วการอะไรหลายๆอย่างอ่ะจะถามในการพูดอ่ะบางทีเราเราอาจจะอยู่ในสถานการณ์
We just want to get away from the place. But if you just stay there and, and you know they're telling lies and you don't say anything, that's not very good. And they may peep, other people may ask you, they may say to you, is this true? And then what are you going to say? Are you going to say, are you going to say it's true or not? So better not to be involved with people who are liars and cheaters. Of course, these are moral, moral principles. If you're preaching, for preaching, we may say things which are not very pleasing to people. Just like we may say to people, you know, you, you're going to become a pig in your next life. You want to be very careful. You're going to become a pig in your next life. It's not very pleasing to people. They're not, they don't like it. If we tell people, you know, the way you live, it's so bad, you know, you're doing so many sinful things, you're going to suffer, people don't like to hear it. But we don't, it's our duty to speak. And it's, it may not be pleasing, and, but it's truthful. So when it comes to preaching, then we won't always be so pleasing to people. people and it may agitate people sometimes. But we have to preach and we have to speak the truth. They may not like it, but we have to speak the truth. Okay. Okay, Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, no more questions. So thank you all very much. Thanks for the translation, Archana Maharaji. And who's doing the Pali translation tonight? Ruksana Mataji. Ruksana Mataji, thank you. And thank, you. thank all the devotees. So we'll see you on Sunday night. We'll continue. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Gurudev. Yeah. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.